Now that each site is cleaned thoroughly, now we're going to actually place the electrodes. Um, now placing the electrodes, you want to make sure you do not touch the adhesive, um, the adhesive pad on the electrodes because this will transfer oils which can affect the ECG recordings and allow it, the ECG uh, electrode to fall off during the test. So we're going to just place them on the mark spots. Now when placing them, you don't want to put a lot of pressure right in the center. Um, this is because there's a, gel, a little gel substance in the middle of that, and if you press too hard on that, then it can cause air pockets to form, which can affect the ECG recording. So you just want to place it on, place it all around the, on the outside just to make sure it sticks. All right, now that we have all the electrodes placed, next we're gonna apply the wires to each electrode. Um, now each wire is labeled to what um, site you apply it to. So this one says right leg. So we're gonna apply it there, and just to note, this is the ground lead in the ECG. And this, this wire says V3. So as you remember, V3 is in between V2 and V4. All right, and that is how you apply a 12 lead ECG. Um, then you just inform the patient to remain relaxed their entire test. Um, you don't want them to move a lot um, during the resting test. Obviously, during the exercise test, they will be moving. Hello, my name's Ari, and I'm going to be walking you through some changes that we would expect to see on an ECG between a resting reading and an exercise reading. So right here we have a depiction of a resting ECG and there's a couple wave sections that we'll look at. So I'll go ahead and mark them for you. This is our P wave, our Q, R, S, and T. And we'll also be looking at the J point. We'll also be examining changes in the QRS segment and then also in the S to T segment. Now, some changes that we would see during an exercising ECG. If we look first at the P wave, now this is the atrial depolarization or the electrical conduction from the SA node to the AV node across the atria. Here we would only see minor changes. Um, if anything, we would see an increase, a small amount in the P wave. Next, we'll look at the Q segment, well, the QRS segment. And in here, we will see some individual changes. Um, firstly, the amplitude of the Q, R, and S waves will increase. So we'll see a much greater difference. However, in the QRS segment, there will be very, very minimal changes um, in time. It won't get larger, it won't get smaller, it'll still take about the same time. Next, when we look at the J-point depression, the J-point depression is the point between ventricular depolarization and the repolarization. And this is usually going to depress, but this is going to blend in with the S and T segment. Because what we're going to see here at the end of ventricular depolarization and the beginning of ventricular repolarization is that it's going to slope upward. So what we'll see is that while this increases in amplitude, it's also going to start to slant. So you're not going to see this definitive line here anymore. And that's what we mean when we say that the J point is going to depress. Then when we look at the T wave, which is the recovery of the ventricles, we have what we can talk about as an absolute versus a relative refractory period. So time can decrease here in the relative refractory period. So time can shorten. 
And also, we're going to see this wave amp we're going to see this wave amplitude increase. So, it'll get larger, but it will take less time. Where we will also see time decrease is from the end of the T wave to the beginning of the next P wave. So this will shorten about here before we see going into the next segment. So what does this mean overall? This means that if we cut out some time right here from one R wave to the next R wave, time is going to decrease. And how do we see that? We see that as an increase in heart rate or the beats per minute.